Hi, you're listening to the Feminine Business School podcast, and I'm your host, Ainsley Young. My work is all about creating a wildly pleasurable and successful business without burning out your body and selling out your soul. I'm also really passionate about ditching the cookie cutter marketing strategies and finding what feels good to you when it comes to marketing. Join me as we talk all things online business, feminist marketing strategies, feminine embodiment, conscious leadership, and pleasurable productivity. Hit subscribe now and let's get started. And to learn the secret to fitting more pleasure into each day while ticking off your to-dos, download my free pleasure and productivity weekly planner. Head to startingwitha.com slash opt-in. Welcome to the Feminine Business School podcast. I am your hostess Ainsley Young and I have another incredible guest interview for you today. I have Rachel Creever. Now, after 15 years as a media strategist, Rachel studied to become a clinical hypnotherapist and RTT therapist, although she does prefer the term intuitive hypnotherapist to clinical. Rachel works one-on-one with clients to overcome issues around food, money, confidence, and more, and also runs a group program called Higher Ground Visionary Amplifier which combines hypnosis and media to help business owners and creative vision for the future of their businesses, clear limiting beliefs, and teaches them how to amplify that vision through media. Welcome to the podcast, Rachel. Thanks for having me. So you have a very interesting background in terms of your corporate background in media, but I'd really love for you to share, how did you get into entrepreneurship? And I know it's been quite a journey, so I'd love to hear more. Yeah, it has been quite a journey. I was in media for 15 years as a media strategist. And so in that role, very much helping clients identify consumer insights and then how to amplify that to reach their audience in the best way possible. After I had my two kids, after I had my second kid, actually, I had postnatal depression and it was a real, I guess you'd call it like come to Jesus moment. (laughs) dark night of the soul and where I really had to work out who I was and what I wanted from that day forward and so I'm forever grateful for my little boy Louis because he was really the one that shook me up and made me reevaluate everything and so when I was on that journey I did hypnotherapy and kinesiology and I studied Vedic meditation and just really started to strip away everything that wasn't needed. And over that time, 2014, 2015, started dabbling with crystals and did an intuitive guidance course and had the most profound experience with a crystal where I actually just in that moment knew I was going to start selling them online. I mean, that doesn't sound too wild now, but in 2015, it felt like a really, really challenging thing for me to do to suddenly go, hey guys, I know I've been this person for (laughs) my whole entire life, but now I am someone that's interested in crystals and suddenly I'm going to start selling them online. So that crystal business was called Rock & Co. And it was a really big healing time for me where I had to be comfortable with people seeing me in a different way, where I had to show up and really show this new side of me that was interested in spirituality. And even though it had been something that I had grown up with, like mum would always talk about angels and guides and she would go and see psychics and she would talk about trusting our intuition and our guards it was still whispered. You know, she didn't really say it in front of dad. And so it was one of those things that even though it was always in my life, I guess that my subconscious mind also had this fear around showing it to anyone. So that crystal business was incredible because not only did it just make me completely be seen and get over the fear of being seen, but it also was incredible in the sense that it just connected me with so many incredible people I was doing crystal workshops and all sorts of things like that. So I was really showing up and being that person. Very soon into it though, I'd say about two years into it or 18 months into it, I realized that I didn't want to pack boxes (laughs) every day. And as much as I loved spirituality and healing, I wasn't going to be able to do a retail job long-term. And so that's when I decided to study. I was actually going to study kinesiology 
And that was what I was really drawn to studying. And then at the 11th hour, it just came in so strong and so clear that I had to do hypnotherapy. And so I studied hypnotherapy through Marissa Peer. She was coming to Sydney and I'm now an RTT therapist and a clinical hypnotherapist and currently doing deeper study into past life healing too, because that just shows up naturally with so many clients in the moment where we'll be regressing them back to the root cause and a past life will spontaneously come up. So I've wanted to do some deeper study into that as well, because it just fascinates me. So it's a sort of a real a roundabout way of saying what I do now, but Rock & Co is actually a really important part of that story, even though I spent so so many years doing advertising and now so many years doing hypnotherapy and I love it. But it's interesting sometimes the way you have to go to a different angle because it's all going to make sense in the end and you, <laughs> you end up somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like the bridge. And I see the similarities mm. between your story and mine because I worked in marketing and how I got into entrepreneurship was through a product-based business, so through handbags. But mm. that wasn't where I was meant to be. And then, yeah, moving into coaching and the feminine embodiment work and then fusing it back with marketing and business. It sounds like you've kind of come like full circle in a way, like everything's connected. Yeah. You can't see the dots connecting until you really start to look back. You can't. And now that we're saying that as well, I wonder if there was just such great learning that we had to get from that product-based business. Well, for me, I felt like when I look back, it's really the connections that I made and the healing that happened. They were the two really key parts of why I had to do that product-based business first. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, well, let's talk about limiting beliefs. What limiting beliefs do you most commonly see with your clients who are business owners? And those limiting beliefs around blocking people's pleasure and ease when it comes to business and life. I think most of the blocks I see in business owners are actually blocking pleasure and ease. So the fear of failure, when that shows up, it's really around overworking or procrastinating. Even when we're procrastinating, we're still blocking pleasure and ease because it's still there in the background, these things that we need to do. And overworking for obvious reasons is blocking pleasure and ease. And that's one that I've definitely struggled with myself is the overworking. And quite often I am surprised that that does come back to more of a fear of success or a fear of failure. The other one I see a lot is this fear of not belonging or this fear of being abandoned. And that very much presented for me or a lot of the healing that I did through Rock & Co, this fear of not belonging. And the way that shows up, I feel, in business owners is not being able to be seen as your true authentic self or this fear around if I show up as my true authentic self, suddenly I'm not going to belong to this group or this friendship circle or I'm going to be judged here and I'll lose friends or I'll lose a relationship of some kind. So that's a really common one too. Another one I see a lot is not trusting yourself. People spinning their wheels, which obviously blocks pleasure and ease because if you don't trust yourself, you're spinning your wheels, you get decision fatigue, and then you just basically are looking outside of yourself for the answers the whole time. So I actually heard this great Seth Godin quote recently which was, you don't need more time. You just need to decide. <laughs> yeah, because the more time we give ourselves, we're going to fill it. It's like continual thinking or doing the wrong things. But I think the more, more you trust yourself and the more confident you feel, then the less you spin your wheels because you can just make decisions faster. Yeah, definitely. So true. In I ran a masterclass this morning for my mastermind clients. And we're looking at the archetypes. So we're looking at the shadow and the illumination archetypes and how we can work with those. And this one around not belonging and feeling abandoned is definitely this prostitute archetype energy. Mm. Move into the lover, where it's divine self-expression. You're claiming all of yourself and all of your desires. So I love that. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love also what you said, Rach, about the fear of success, because mm. I feel like that really taps into a wound for so many of us around our capacity that in order to be more successful, we have to work harder and there's sacrifices. Like it's going to cost us too much. It's going to cost mm -hmm. us our health, our energy, our time, what people are going to think of us. So I can definitely see in myself and in clients as well, all of these limiting beliefs. Yeah. I think we also can cap the amount of joy or success or abundance we feel like we're allowed to have. And that can often present more potentially on a subconscious level. We don't believe that we can be more successful than a parent or an older sibling 
or the socioeconomic group that we grew up in for whatever reason. So we cap that amount of money or we cap the amount of success. And I find it myself sometimes because I have been exploring more around this pleasure and joy and ease that I can sometimes cap the joy Or I watch my little boy sometimes, you know, we're having the best day ever, but he'll have to do something to bring it back down for whatever reason that feels normal and natural to him. So I'm taking him to the kinesiologist as well. And I wouldn't do hypnotherapy on my own kids, but because for obvious reasons, (laughs) I'm their mother. So um, I'm probably part of the cause, Um, but they both have their own kinesiologist. And so that's something I'm going to be working with him on the next time I take my little boy, because I really want them to just be able to fully express themselves, to fully receive all the joy and pleasure that is available to them in this lifetime. Yeah, I love that. It really speaks to our pleasure capacity and our pleasure potential. Like how much can we welcome in? How much can we allow ourselves to be in that pleasure? And that's a real practice, a real embodiment piece of feeling that pleasure in your body. And how long can you just let it simmer? Because so quickly our head will be like, oh, but you've got to do something. Like write that email. But I love what you said about the conditioning and the cap that you might have put on, say, your earning potential. Because this is something that I found myself struggling with last year. And that's when I reached out to you, I guess, the needle, the dial of how much I can welcome in with doing less work. So yeah, there's definitely so much potency in medicine in Rachel's work. So let's hook back in. What limiting beliefs are you actually challenged by at the moment? Or what are you struggling with? Well, there's two at the moment. One I'm kind of feeling like I can really let it go with more ease now is sometimes beliefs aren't limiting until they are. And I had a belief growing up and it was a really positive belief that I was independent and resourceful and I'm the eldest of four kids. And I was always the one that could just sort things out or get things. So that's really great. So when I was in advertising and starting my own businesses, yes independent, resourceful. I can make things happen. And that's why so many of us are driven because these beliefs have helped us. Every single belief that we establish has helped us in some way until it doesn't. And so what I found last year in my business is that I was stopping and blocking myself because I didn't believe that I could have support or that anyone else could really do it the way I wanted it done. And so even though that was a great belief early on, it became limiting in the sense that I wasn't allowing my business to grow anymore because I wasn't having support in my business. So I now got someone and it was difficult at the beginning to find the right person and believe that I could find the right person. But it's interesting to see now how much more at ease I feel yeah oh I really love that I feel like you've been Mm. in my mind for the last few weeks in terms of this being a belief coming up about being resourceful and independent Mm. you can make stuff happen but then looking at the level of support that you're tolerating like it's quite minimal or that it's not in alignment with the level that you desire like I love your example that it's welcome in so much more ease having this support and then you know you've got evidence in the 3D that you can find somebody remarkable and amazing to help you out so yeah that's awesome yeah well I've been working on this belief around business being hard or having to work really hard in order to deserve it and I had a hypnotherapy session myself recently where I had this visual because in the type of hypnotherapy that I do we regress back to the root cause and so I had another friend who did the course with me do a treatment on me and this image came up of my dad and I when I was one like a photo from a photo album that I'm familiar with and in it I was thinking because I'm obviously (laughs) wanting to analyze my own session during the session it's just really annoying but I was like oh why has this photo come up and once I just let it go and looked at the photo I realized that is so happy and it was this photo of what life was like before he started the business and this understanding of life got hard after that. So after he started his own business, when I was one and a half, everything was quite difficult for the next seven years, which is such a fundamental time for little brains. And so the messages that I was receiving around, it's really hard to have your own business and it's a struggle and it's a battle and you have to do long hours. That was something else that I've been really clearing up recently to be more in line with what you were saying, which is it can be pleasurable. It can be easy. Yeah. I think it's such a common belief or something that we're embodying around that business has to be hard and hard work equals success. And I think because we've been so conditioned thanks to all of the oppressive systems that we live under, it's really common. That's something that I continually work on, yet none of my family were entrepreneurial. So I'm not modeling that. 
So where do our limiting beliefs come from? How do we form them? Mm. When we are between the ages of not to seven, we're in a brainwave state called theta. We have different brainwave states that we move through during the day. And theta is something that we are in in those really fundamental years. And our brains are like a sponge when we're like that. And we can access that state again during hypnosis or meditation. Sometimes, you know, when you're driving and then you've just forgotten how you got there or you just lose time in a creative project, I would say that you're probably dropping into that beautiful theta brainwave state. So when we're little kids and you can see it in their creative play, we're in that beautiful state. And because we're in that state, we're absorbing everything around us. We're also absorbing the experiences that happen directly to us. And we're also observing. So like the example that I just gave then, I was observing in those really fundamental years of what it was like to start your own business. And when it's a direct experience, we're also absorbing that with a child's mind. So it's quite simple thinking. You know, we don't have the lens, that wider view that mum has postnatal depression. And so that's why she's seeming a bit detached right now. Those little brains simply just think, I'm not good enough or mum doesn't love me. They internalize it in a really black and white way. So that's why revisiting through hypnotherapy is so powerful because you get to see it from a higher view. You get to see it from a different perspective and reframe it because then you know, you understand, well, that's not true. Mum did love me. She was just having a rough time back then. And I don't have to carry that belief of I'm not good enough or nobody loves me with me anymore. Did that make sense? Did I answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cool. Okay. So let's move on to a more specific pleasure question. I'm really curious, like what practices or rituals do you embody in your business that helps you really run your business from a place of pleasure and ease? I love this question. So I do lots of different little tricks along the day or the week, depending on what's coming up. So just today to prepare for our podcast, you sent me through a few example questions that you might ask. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to jump in the bath, beautiful salt bath and read those questions and just have a little bit of an idea of what's going to happen in the podcast today. So baths, I love them for grounding, for feeling I guess, pleasure in the day. It feels like something I would never have been able to do in a corporate job. And so it feels like, wow, this is such a treat to be able to work for myself and do this. I also have other little intuitive practices. So before I'm going to my office to do a client session, I'll ask that my angels and guides clear the space and do anything that needs to be done there before I get there. I love scent incense and essential oils. And I quite often just put a bit of frankincense on my third eye before a session. And so scent really helps me feel in my body and music. I love all types of music. I'll go from my cheesy nineties playlist to mantra based music. I've been really loving mantra based music lately, especially as I'm writing, because you don't actually know what the words are often saying, but just that sense of subconsciously, they're telling you that you are, you know, it's safe for you to be in your power or it's go out there and get it at whatever the thing might be it's saying on a subconscious level. I absolutely love that. And I think the other thing that gives me pleasure and ease in my business is other women. Over the years, I have got this incredible group of women that I know that I can reach out to because working by yourself is lonely. And sometimes you do want someone to bounce off. So I have an incredible group of women that I turn to and grab lunch with. It just helps me feel more in my body as well, just to be able to have a laugh and relate to other women in business. Yeah, I love that. And I do get the sense from you that you derive a lot of pleasure from that sense of being grounded. You've mentioned that many times in terms of (laughs) and your rituals and like really coming back into your body. I can deeply resonate with that. And I love how you really get your senses involved to Mm. access pleasure. And I wholeheartedly agree with you around welcoming in pleasure through the company of others and I think it really shows how we have to also be very discerning in terms of who we surround ourselves with and their energy because some people can deplete our pleasure stamina Mm -hmm. 
access pleasure and others really amplify it. So, yeah, we have to prioritise pleasure and also be discerning as to the different avenues. So true. Well, anyone that's done any healing and releasing as well will recognise the people that reinforce those old beliefs (laughs) and the people that are more in line with the new you that's coming through. But no, you're right. I'm a double air sign, so I need a lot of grounding, especially before client sessions. So I do prioritise that. (laughs) Well, whatever works for you. I really, really loved our conversation today. Thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom and your knowledge and your experience. But I'd love for you to share how can people follow your work and the different ways that clients can work with you. My clients work with me either if it's a one-off issue, we can do a one month. Some clients work with me for six months. So I've got people that have specific business goals and they want to be able to do a session once a month just to make sure they're staying on target. And I also run a course called High Ground Visionary Amplifier where I combine the media and marketing skills with hypnosis. So we vision for the future through hypnosis. We then clear any limiting beliefs through hypnosis. And then we work out how to amplify that vision through media strategy Oh, and you can find me on Instagram at, at Rachel Crether or my website and join my newsletter. I send out a monthly newsletter just with things that I've been loving and reading and watching. And probably the best way to reach out is via DM. Yeah, I love your newsletter. I always find some random interesting thing to have a look at that you've been deeply down that rabbit hole in. So yeah, definitely sign up letter and um, follow her on Instagram. So thanks again, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I love this chat. If you want to unleash your pleasure potential to claim the business and life you desire, I have something really exciting to share with you today. Soon I'll be running an exclusive Activate and Ascend workshop. I have so many juicy and new teachings to share in this workshop, including my signature Activate and Ascend framework. That will allow you to ascend with ease and pleasure into your most expansive, delicious and pleasurable life and business. It's going to be amazing if I do say so myself. Now, to learn more and to apply for this exclusive workshop, just jump over to the show notes and you'll see the link with all of the details and how to apply there. Or alternatively, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me via email ainsley at startingwitha.com. Just check the show notes. Everything is there. And I look forward to welcoming you into the Activate and Ascend workshop. Thanks so much for listening to today's podcast episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you received some tips and takeaways or maybe a major aha. And if you did, please leave me a quick five-star rating and review in Apple Podcasts. I'd be so, so grateful. And if you'd like to connect, just come and say hi. DM me over on Instagram. You can find me at Ainsley Young. I'll speak with you soon.